Uh, it wasn't for QLogic, we wouldn't be here. I want to say thanks to Rob and his team at QLogic for providing the booth space for Oracle Open World. And for the folks out there, Oracle, um, we, there's no space available for SiliconANGLE and the Cube. Um, you know, they're hardcore, they want to control all their you know, video operations themselves, the big company. And uh, we got in through QLogic and uh, EMC and Intel supporting us. And we're on the ground bringing you all the coverage of Oracle Open World. And uh, San Francisco is essentially shut down, traffic's stopped everywhere. Oracle's got 45,000 people in San Francisco, and um, it's just absolutely insane here. Um, biz dev going on, people partying, doing deals, Dave, all around the world. Oracle is a huge company, 800 pound gorilla, and at the bottom line is, is that Oracle is one of those companies like Apple that is, uh, you know, controls the industry at an enterprise level. We know Apple on the consumer side, Oracle's the Apple of the enterprise, and, uh, and they're trying to change. Oracle used to own the, you know, you know, e CRM, ERP, all those biz software, big database applications. Now the world's changing to open source, cloud, mobile, big data. And anyone who's developing software knows that they, that's a like big opportunity. And Oracle's kind of the incumbent, Dave. They are the, the big guys that everyone's trying to steal market share from. So um, whether you're an entrepreneur, startup, or, or a company, you want to compete with some of those scraps. So for Oracle, you know, they're clutching onto the marketplace. Um, they're trying to control everything, and uh, that's Oracle. You know, John, I'm reminded of a comment that Tom Georgens has made on theCUBE. He said, the headlines are relentlessly bad, but business is good. Uh, or maybe he said it in reverse, but uh, yet again, the, the market is down uh, 100 points. What's the, Apple the stock down. doing right now? Apple is down. Um, interestingly, the NASDAQ is up. Yeah. Um, but So what's but, the current? Okay, so you can see from the screen here, we have a live picture of uh, the Apple keynote, which is going on in Cupertino, California. Um, we could not get the cube there in time. Um, we, you know, trying to you know, get there and uh, get finance to go do these big events like Apple, and soon we'll be there. But right now, we're covering Oracle. Uh, but Apple's announcement is the iPhone 4S, and we're still waiting to hear about the iPhone 5 and other announcements. Obviously, their operating system is shipping like crazy. The big news there is that you know, the Lion has really been a successful product, and the iPhone 4S. So, you looking at Apple, yes. Yeah, so they're going through the feature listings of the new 4S, and uh, we're going to continue to get coverage here. Um, if I had Wi-Fi up uh, here, I'd have more access to, to data, so Mark Risen Hopkins is yelling the, uh, the features over the wire here. But so basically it's off on no iPhone 5, right? Yeah, no iPhone 5 announcement No iPhone 5 announcement yet, but, but we still may see it today. So I think if you look or at the screen, Dave, if you look at the, the market screen, doesn't think for, so. For the folks out, for the folks out there watching the the picture here, um, we just want to talk. Com I'll do some commentary on Apple because really we talked about this yesterday here inside the cube at Oracle, and is that the world is lagging in this enterprise business on the consumerization side, meaning that the user experience and the user interface really sucks compared to what Apple's doing. So if you look at what Apple's done, they've absolutely revolutionized the user experience, the user interface, and even Android, which has some cool features, is so far away from being close to Apple in terms of user interface, user experience, and the iPad, and how they do that is really hard to do. Apple has a, a huge lead on the tablets. I still don't think anyone's going to catch up to Apple for at least a couple years on the iPad side. On the iPhone side, we all know how revolutionary that was. And they continue to, to change the game. If you look at their reader, they're integrating media. iTunes obviously is iTunes, and the App Store has just been a huge success. Apple continues at every single level to dominate on a performance basis of both products and finances. And you talk about the Apple stores. Apple stores, you know, people thought Apple was crazy for launching retail, Dave. And the, and the fact of the matter is, it's been so successful. <laughs> successful brilliant. Because one, the stores are beautiful, and the products in there are good, and Apple takes huge painstaking steps to make sure that the products that go into the Apple store are good. And <laughs> what's worse is, well worse or better for Apple, is that they take 50% of the cash. So if you and I come up with a really killer product and get in the Apple store, we have to give up 50% of our revenue just to be stocked in the Apple retail outlets. So it's, it's a double-edged sword. You get in, to the Apple store, you make a, a boatload of money on the product, but Apple gets 50% of the revenue. I still think it's a good deal. I definitely would do that deal. Well, and your point about the, uh, the retail presence, Ron Johnson ended up at JCPenney, right? They, Ron Johnson's the guy who basically brought Apple to the retail marketplace, and uh, huge. So the news today, John, is that 
that evidently Apple will not announce an iPhone 5. They're going to announce an iPhone 4S. Same dimensions, uh, I guess, as the four but more powerful guts. So, you know that teardrop shaped device that we all yeah. saw? Uh, yeah. That evidently ain't happening today. Now, the word is that even if it's not an iPhone 5, the 4S is, is, is pretty peppy. Yeah. I think it's going to have a gigabyte of RAM. It's got Apple's new A5 chip. What do you think that means? I mean, is that, you know, no big deal? Or will people skip over the, the 4S? Um, will you buy one? No, I won't buy the 4S. I have a 4, I'm waiting for the 5. I mean, you really have to look at the feature set. I, have a, I can't get online right now, Wi-Fi's down here. I don't know how you're getting on, but, but uh, I, I wouldn't. I might buy it, I mean, if the features are good. But here's the thing, um, my speculation from what I've been hearing uh, about the iPhone 5 and iPhone 4S is, Apple's kind of stuck in a little bit of a, of a halfway spot here, mainly because the iPhone was primarily d built for AT&T's network. So you look at the, the RF side of the business, you got GSM and CDMA, so you have two different approaches. Even though Verizon Wireless carries the iPhone, it's completely not optimized for Verizon's network. It's optimized for AT&T. So there's been some discussion around Sprint and iPhone, so I believe this is my conspiracy theory, that Apple, based upon my data, talking to friends uh, in Silicon Valley, is that I, the, the Apple team is really trying to divine the iPhone so it can work across multiple protocols and multiple RF capabilities and transports, uh, mainly because Android supports it as well. Um, so they want to compete there. And why, why wouldn't Apple want to be on Sprint, AT&T, and, uh, and Verizon? So you know, I think there's some design challenges. They might have hold off the iPhone 5, um, for that reason, don't know. I'm still waiting to confirm that or not. Yeah, so that's a good perspective. So you feel like um, the market feels. Mm -hmm. you know, what? Breaking news coming in. 1080p camera. That's, that's a feature that I might want to buy. I mean, the, the iPhone already takes great photos. 1080p camera. That's, that's uh, iPhone 4S. Okay, so we got breaking news coming across the wire here. It's iPhone 4S has a 1080p uh, camera. That's the big feature. Same chipset as iPad 2? Yeah. Well, we reported on SiliconANGLE last year uh, and then last fall that the major improvements to Apple is going to be very much enterprise-like, meaning you're going to start to see some software increases. So what's happening is that the BlackBerry and everyone else is trying to be more consumer-like, Apple being more enterprise-like, meaning encryption, software for productivity apps, integrating at the software level to be a stronger device. So obviously with the 1080p camera, I think you're going to expect to see Apple introduce a more set of diverse features to support the kind of environments that users are expecting, whether it's work or play. Do you think um, that it's a little bit of catch up to some of the Android phones that are out there? No, no way. Android's way behind Apple way behind Apple. Can you elaborate on that? Well, I mean, Android, Android does some technical things uh, a little bit better and some of the voice recognition, some of the built-in features. Obviously, you know, it's Google, so it's got some integrations with in Google tools and Gmail and YouTube, so I think that's a, a good enough feature set, but overall, uh, it's just not as elegant as, uh, as the iPhone. Just yeah, overall, okay. from a software, just overall software usability standpoint. So the next web is reporting an eight megapixel camera and an A5 processor, a gigabyte of RAM, better optics and a more accurate differential GPS stage. Um, so, yeah, I kind of agree with you, John. I'm not sure that's going to be enough to push people over the edge. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm on the fence. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> Keen's got his credit card. How about you, David Floyer? Are you going to buy an iPhone 4S? Uh, it's you're going you're to go for it? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. If we're an iPhone 5, would you go for it? I, I'm waiting for the... Oh, so he's waiting. Okay. So I think, look at the, the video integration, um, it's phenomenal. Um, I just love the fact that you can just, the camera is so versatile, you can you know, just take photos are phenomenal. Um, the, the iOS has got to get better. Uh, the other thing that no one's really talking about is the monetization platform of Apple. Like if you're a developer, um, you know, the, uh, there's been a big debate on which ad networks are actually a better environment for monetization around the ad. Obviously we've been following that very closely with um, you know, millennial media. So, so you know, we know that Apple's doing extremely well um, and obviously Google has bought AdMob. So um, you know, it's interesting, Dave. I mean, Apple just has such great market power. They are the 800 pound gorilla on the consumer side. and. Uh, to continue to dominate, and, and and if you've got stock in Apple, I would say hold. I would not uh, sell. Um, well, it's interesting what's happening in the stock market right now. The Dow is way down. Tech is up. The Nasdaq is up, but Apple is off, way off on the news that. Yeah, what's your connectivity? No How are you getting internet? Um, are you on Wi-Fi? No. 
We've got uh, 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 MiFi going on. Look for River. Um, yeah, so. What's the password? Can't say. Huh? Just, can you say it louder? <laughs> so we're here. Let me just reset here. We're here live at Oracle Open World. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Yeah, yeah. And I'm with John Furrier, my co-host, who is the founder of SiliconAngle.com. Now, for a lot of you out there, Oracle might be new, Oracle Open World might be new. There's a lot of buzzwords in this world. Oracle, obviously, big database company and, and obviously does a lot of applications, bought Sun, it's full stack hardware, software, and to a certain extent, a services company. Um, a lot of you may be new to this world, so we encourage you to check out SiliconAngle.com. Check out our TV site, SiliconAngle.tv. Uh, we've got a new site up. It's a vertical publication into services where the new IT web services, IT as a service, SaaS, meets the traditional services marketplace. Um, it's a site that's being run by Alex Williams and Clint Finley, uh, two writers that came over to SiliconAngle from the ReadWrite web. Uh, big contributions from folks on the Wikibon side, including Bert Lattimore and, and Jeff Kelly. So check out servicesangle.com, check out wikibon.org. If you got questions, we'll try to get answers. Check out the, the resources that we have. If you can't find what you're looking for, ping us, ask a question, send us a tweet. I'm at D. Vellante, John is at Furrier, at Silicon Angle, at Wikibon, and we'll try to get you an answer. Yeah, so Dave, the other, other news coming from Apple is um, they announced newsstand partners, New York Times, Wired, National Geographic, and more. Um, we haven't gotten the email yet for siliconangle.com, but I'm um, soon sure we will. Um, certainly the, the Cube uh, videos will be up on there as well. But here's the disruption that Apple's going to take next, and, uh, and that is the media business. So Apple obviously disrupted the music business, disrupted the, app, the app applications business. Expect Apple with the iPad to disrupt the, the um, newspaper business and the magazine business. Obviously with magazines and virtual reality and uh, augmented reality, you're going to see Apple do some serious damage there. I predict that eventually they will be controlling most of that marketplace. So the stock's getting crushed today. It, was, it had hit a high of, all, of a little over 380 um, just before noon in anticipation, you know, buying the, buying the rumor, selling the news. That's exactly what happened here. Of course, the sell-off is uh, compounded by the fact that there's no iPhone 5. So the stock was up at 380. It's now, it's now bounced off of 360. Yeah. Uh, down about almost 3% for the day. Yeah, I'm sure that'll pop right back up. I have no, no, no uh, debate at all about that. You heard John Furrier calling for a buying opportunity. Buying yeah. opportunity. Uh, we'll see how it finishes at the end of the day. We'll keep an eye on the Apple stock. Um, let's get back to Oracle, Dave. Oracle Open World. Um, uh, you get Joe Tucci here in picture in picture. Um, Joe Tucci, obviously the CEO of EMC, announces he's going to step down in 2012, and they're looking for an heir apparent there. Pat Gelsinger is obviously in the running. A few other candidates. Um, obviously, EMC is watching the succession plans and saw the debacle at HP, and knows that the, you know finding a CEO to to run uh, the company is important. So, you know, obviously EMC's got really strong management over there, so expect to see EMC uh, most likely look at Pat Gelsinger or someone from their organization internally. Um, I would be shocked if EMC went outside for a CEO, Dave. I think Joe Tucci is too smart. I think the culture of EMC is too strong. And with their positioning and their branding and messaging around cloud meets big data, Pat Gelsinger clearly has a roadmap for success. Uh, I am so impressed with Pat Gelsinger that he is bringing that Intel mojo to EMC, and you're going to see EMC quickly get into the marketplace, move from a storage-dominating company to a cloud-based services and product company that is going to be uh, enabling the mobile cloud social revolution. Um, I expect them to have a major presence in the unstructured data market. Obviously they have Green Plum, they got Isilon, um, Still the jury's out on how that green plum's going to work out, but still seems to give them a good beachhead in the unstructured business. Um, Want to hear how they evolve green plum, given Oracle's announcement here with, uh, with their big data approach. Well, John, Mark Risen Hopkins, when the news came out that Tucci was going to step down in 2012, Hopkins wrote a story on Silicon Angle um, that was, it was very good. Uh, the two front runners for the job for the Tucci replacement are Pat Gelsinger, as you mentioned, and David Goulden, who's the CFO. Now, Goulden's a long time uh, EMCer, he uh, believes sits on the board of VMware, so he's plugged into the Wall Street scene. So, 
you know, Gelsinger is not a lock, but um, but Hopkins predicted, and I uh, I support that prediction that that Gelsinger is next in line. I think that's a big reason why Gelsinger left Intel after 30 years. He's a legend in in, in tech circles, yeah. and um, yeah. and so I, I I think that he is the heir apparent and has the charisma, has the knowledge, angle. and and I think it's you know it's his so to let's, lose. So let's let's uh, Mark, can you pull up Silicon Angle's site and let's just review some of the top stories we're seeing on the marketplace today that Silicon Angle's reporting. Uh, obviously, Silicon Angle, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, reporting. Uh, obviously, the <laughs> R.I.P. Zune. Um, yeah, I mean that's a you know, slow death. Uh, obviously, long time coming. Red Hat acquiring um, uh, open source storage from Gluster. Uh, IBM uh, security services. These are the kinds of stories that we're going to be covering, okay, as well as the Apple stories in depth. Um, we have more in depth coverage than any other major tech blog on the marketplace. We cover the breaking news, but we go in depth. And obviously, we are watching The Cube. This is their, our flagship telecast, SiliconAngle.tv, where we bring live coverage at the most important tech events and bring them to you. And we do multi day in depth analysis commentary and insight to provide to you from the event, and obviously we'll report on other events, obviously the Apple event, if we could get a, uh, an anchor desk there, we'd be there. Um, but uh, this is theCUBE, our flagship telecast, and uh, we are here in San Francisco, California for Oracle Open World, where Oracle is announcing all their major innovations, and the story here, Dave, is big data, not so much cloud. Last year, Larry Ellison was talking about cloud in a box, cloud everything. This year is about analytics, big data, um, and uh, the future of Oracle, which is a fully integrated hardware, software, special purpose built architecture uh, for the enterprise. Yeah, and I also want to let people know, go to siliconangle.tv, you'll see all the videos, you'll see the live coverage here, you'll see, check, click on newest videos, you'll see all the videos from this event. Um, you can go to Wikibon and you'll see uh, that we've got up a page on Oracle Open World that, um, that has all the videos, it'll have, it'll consolidate um, it's called Oracle Open World 2000 Level. It consolidates all the videos that we're doing here, all the editorial that's being done. It's a great resource. Uh, shout out to Jeff Kelly for, for putting that up. And um, you'll see a number of guests, and we've already got, um, check it out, we've probably got mm, 10 at least, maybe 10 or 12 articles and research notes and editorials up already on this event. We want to cover this like a blanket. If you got questions, hit us up. We'll try to get you an answer, and uh, you know, um, let us know what you think. Tweet us, and uh, uh, we'll try to help you out. Yeah. So we have a little Wi-Fi problem here. I can't access my laptop here, so I really can't respond to tweets directly on my iPad. A little slow to do that. But if you want to tweet us at Silicon Angle, um, hashtag the Cube, uh, we will respond. Mark Rizen Hopkins will will get us the questions. Uh, but I I want to talk about uh, that story about Microsoft and the Zune. Zune is their iPod kind of competitor, been out for a while um, as a player. Uh, the death of the Zune really <laughs> puts an exclamation point around the dominance of Apple and how strong Android has come out of the woodwork and how Zune really kind of just never happened because this is a classic example of Microsoft dropping the ball on doing anything consumer driven. And, and one of the complaints about Microsoft, Dave, has been that just they have no awareness around consumer. Um, they've never really been a leader in the UI side of the business. They've never really been a leader in the user experience. Um, we all know they copied Apple um, and then can, they fumbled with the phone. Now they have, you know, trying to get with Nokia. So, you know, I think Microsoft really needs to up their game on the whole user experience. It's been a big theme. They've been very weak on virtualization. So, you know, I think Microsoft is in a really, not in a good position right now from a, you know, they're on the track, they're a horse on the track, but ultimately Microsoft has just really been hurting. Um, they continue to dominate their business of selling windows and licenses, but you know, their ecosystem has been strong, but Microsoft really has to get their game up and bring on more and more of that product leadership. And, and that could be fast following too. It doesn't have to be like pioneering. Just get some good products out the door. Yeah, I mean, we've had this discussion several times, you and I. I mean, I've asked you before, and I'll ask you again, is, is Microsoft still relevant? Um, I think, I think so, Microsoft is relevant in the world that they're in, but the world's changing, right? There's new, new users coming on that are you know, entering the workplace. You know, it used to be like back in the old days in the business of the men, car, auto manufacturers. You know, they wanted to get the people to buy their first car because if they bought their first car, um, they could stay with that company and keep that brand alive with first time car buyers. With computing, the same thing is happening. This consumerization of, of computing is really relevant, and that's where Microsoft is not relevant. Microsoft does not 
hitting the mark on the new users. New users come in and go, you know, Microsoft who? Yahoo who? You know, so these older brands in the computer business, just because they have market power and good cash flow with their incumbent franchises, really are hurting to the new users. The new users will ask themselves, why would I ever want to use a Microsoft product? Uh, and you know what, that hurts the overall you know, Intel PC business and that gives us, again, more strength to the argument that Apple will continue to dominate uh, with their product leadership, with their execution, and overall for financial performance. I think it's very symbolic that IBM recently surpassed uh, Microsoft in terms of market cap. Uh, they're both hovering around 200 million, 205, 203. Uh, Microsoft's a little ahead right now, but you know, essentially Microsoft you know, decoupled IBM's mainframe business, took IBM, uh, took IBM out of the monopoly, um, and was the most valuable tech company in the planet, and now here's IBM with its new business model of the past 10 or 15 years crawling back, and now is a, at least an equally valuable company. Of course, Apple is the the big king in the block now. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the way you, way you can explain the IBM transformation to take over the leadership position in terms of market cap over Microsoft is simply put, they're executing on their business and they're actually transforming their business. So what Microsoft has not done as well as IBM is that IBM has absolutely moved with the marketplace. They, you know, they sold off Lenovo PC to still supply that product to their customer base, expanded their services business, essentially execute on the execution side, brought in more revenue streams, and IBM's got some dogs in their portfolio. I mean, they've struggled with Lotus and transforming that brand, and again, that's just a whole nother conversation, you know, and the debacle of Lotus, but that's, you know, again, a whole nother conversation. But in general, IBM has executed extremely well. Mm. They have great corporate marketing, as Ray Wang pointed out, but for the most part, it's pure execution. I think Microsoft has fumbled on the execution side and the roadkill of products is just endless. You know, phone, Zoom now, it just, it goes on and on. So, you know, is Ballmer the right CEO? I, I still think I like Ballmer, but you know, something's got to change. I mean, they got to start establishing some execution in their business and that might mean cannibalizing their existing Windows and Office business. What about Microsoft and cloud? What's your, what's your take there? I think they have a huge opportunity with cloud. Obviously Azure is not a small platform. They have scale. Microsoft has scale. So I think, you know, I hate to use the word pivot, but uh, you know, since that's being kicked around a lot in, in, in the community these days, Microsoft can pivot with cloud. They do have scale. They just got to get their act together and, and, and get out of the politics uh, that goes on there. And when I talk to people inside Microsoft, there's uh, two camps. There's the, well, we're Microsoft, we're big, we can do a lot of cool things. And then there's another camp that says, this is so political, it's a disaster. Um, and the, the, the interesting thing about Microsoft, and this is more on the, the web side, if you look at Yahoo and Microsoft, both have failed, in my opinion, to really cross over to the new architecture of Web 2.0 and social. And I'll give you an example. If you look at the management team of Yahoo and the management team of Microsoft, the MSN and their online and cloud operation, in essence, what you have here is a complete swip swap of people. <laughs> if you look at the history, and this is, has not been posted out there, so this might be a good blog post for some of our writers, because uh, I've yet to report on this. Um, the top management at Yahoo, is ex-Microsoft. The top management at Microsoft on the search side is ex-Yahoo. So there's been a complete flip-flop of the management team on both companies. So the Yahoo guys went to Microsoft, Bing, and then the Microsoft guys went to Yahoo. So that, to me, tells a story. Well, and we have Pareg Patel coming on uh, shortly, maybe even bring him in a little earlier, uh, from VMware, and a lot. VMware obviously has a lot of Microsoft, former Microsoft executives, not the least of which is Paul Moritz, and, 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 and Todd, who's been on theCUBE a number of times, uh, Todd Nielsen. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, VMware is exactly the kind of company we look at that's emerging, that quite frankly has the DNA to take territory down on um, the new marketplace. I mean, you said, we started VMworld, we had the cube there. VMworld was very active in laying out a year ago in 2010, their architecture, which is in essence a kind of a software mainframe, as we talked about, that's Paul Marist laid out. Larry Ellison's completely copying the same exact messaging of VMware, but he's taking a completely different twist on it. He's vertically integrating performance and hardware. So, so interesting enough is they both have huge ecosystems developing. Obviously Oracle's a monster ecosystem, but VMware's got a very robust ecosystem developing, and there's, I think, a lot of money to be made in VMware. Question is, how does that all kind of cross-connect? Well, I think VMware is driving you know, a lot of the discussion in the data center. Um, 
and its owner, EMC, I think actually has a lot to lose when you start thinking about Oracle and, and what Oracle's trying to do with Exadata and grabbing more of the storage stack. So it's going to be interesting to yeah. see how so they... You, what's the market cap of VMware right now? What's the market cap of EMC? I'd like to interesting so, get those so, stats. So VMware's tr uh, trading in a range of about 30 billion, maybe 33 billion, and uh, EMC, let me just pull them up, I'm guessing around 50, but... We'll, Take a look at EMC's. 33 billion. 33 billion cap. is VMware, EMC's around 42. 42, um, okay, so less than EMC. So the question that I have is when- No, no, what? no, EMC's still uh, about $10 billion more valuable than VMware. The interesting thing about it is EMC owns 80% of VMware. So if you do the math, a, a, a disproportionate of proportion of the value of EMC's value is VMware. Yeah. Much higher well, than my, the, my, uh, my joke in the, uh, at the cocktail parties that I go out and around Silicon Valley is, can't wait for when, when VMware spins off EMC. Um, well, and that'll, that'll happen once but, the market cap increases the over but, 42 billion. But my contention is that EMC is a great way to own VMware stock because you get the ca great cash flow yeah. of, of, of EMC. I think the core EMC business is undervalued because everybody's putting yeah. a premium on VMware and because EMC, Tucci has said, I'm not going to spin it off, people, devalue the core EMC piece. So it's a great way, a more yeah, conservative way to own